Small vans were once very small indeed, essentially super minis with blanked out rear windows. And that was fine if you were an envelope courier or a florist, but not much use otherwise. Back in 1993 though, one LCV design changed all that, predictably brought to us by the UK's biggest van franchise, Vauxhall, and carrying a name that's now familiar to around a quarter of a million satisfied owners across Britain, the Combo. Four decades on, it's still going strong, bigger and more practical than ever before in this fourth generation, guys. The thinking behind the Combo's original cleverness seems quite simple now. Take a small car platform, but build a properly shaped load space cube on it, a concept that was rather crudely executed in the original little Vauxhall Corsa-based Mark I Combo B design, but delivered with a bit more finesse by the second generation Combo C model launched in 2001. Uh, the Mark III Combo D model of 2011, which was based on a Fiat Doblo platform, went up a size uh, so as to to be able to compete with really spacious small vans like Citroen's Berlingo and Peugeot's Partner. Uh, there's no doubt that this replacement fourth generation Combo E model can do that because it now shares virtually every element of its design with those two Gallic contenders. And that reflects Vauxhall's change of ownership to the French PSA group. Uh, the Combo, which is now known as the Combo Cargo, to differentiate it from the Combo Life passenger carrying version of this design, uh, these days represents the entry point to Vauxhall's LCB lineup. It's the kind of van that you buy if your business needs what the industry calls a B segment commercial model, uh, a compact LCB that's a bit larger than the brand's old Corsa van, but a bit smaller than the Griffin Maker's mid sized Vivara model. And now that also features PSA Group Engineering. Now you will be aware that there are plenty of other B-segment vans that compete against this Vauxhall, so this combo has been designed to try to stand out. Buyers get low running costs, courtesy of an engine range primarily based around an extremely frugal 1.5 litre diesel engine, and smart technology that includes a clever onboard weighing system and a clever surround rear vision camera. Plus there are a couple of body lengths and two or three seat options, along with a crew van variant. It all seems to make a lot of sense on paper, but in practice, well, let's find out. In the days before vans borrowed car-like underpinnings, they certainly never used to be as comfortable to drive as this. A firm ride used to be a given with an LCV, courtesy of the stiff springs that were needed for the uh, heavy payloads. This combo cargo, though, confines the LCV elements of its engineering to the places on the chassis that they're actually needed. Here at the front, the platform and the suspension is pretty much exactly as you'd find on one of the very latest medium mid-sized Vauxhall cars, uh, the brand's Grandland X SUV, for example. All that comes courtesy of the Peugeot Citroen PSA Group Engineering that all modern Vauxhalls must have, uh, which if you didn't know about, uh, you might almost guess from the supple suspension feel that we mentioned earlier. Uh, the PSA Group acquisition means that uh, Vauxhall has access to all kinds of clever technology for this model this time around. Not only a decent entertainment system, all the brands are now delivering that, but also tech that you can't, well currently anyway, find outside PSA Group products in the LCV sector, like an overload indicator for the uh, cargo bay that tells you if your payload's been exceeded, and a permanent rear view camera that acts like a digital rear view mirror and helps with a huge blind spot that you have with any van when you're coming out of an angled junction. You'll be wanting to know about engines, so uh, let's cover those now. Um, now it's possible that this will be the last Vauxhall compact van with a power plant lineup based primarily around diesel power. It is appropriate then that this E-Series combo features a state-of-the-art 1.5 litre turbo D unit uh, introduced initially in the range in 130 HP form before being uh, made available as well in 75 HP and 100 HP guises to replace the older tech 1.6 litre diesel or power plant that was offered from launch. 
The base 75 HP Turbo D variant is a distinctly leisurely thing, taking nearly 16 seconds to reach 62 miles an hour from rest on the way to 94 MPH. Uh, that helps to explain why almost all customers opt for one of the two perkier combo cargo diesel models, probably in most cases the 100 horsepower version, uh, which makes 62 in just under 13 seconds on the way to a top speed of just over 100 miles an hour. At the top of the range, the 130 horsepower unit is the only diesel engine mated to a manual gearbox with six speeds rather than five, and it's the power plant to choose if you plan on doing any towing or that you just want a van that makes mincemeat of uh, typical overtaking maneuvers on the highway. Uh, the 300 newton meter torque output offers a plump wave of pulling power that allows the manual version of this variant to tow along uh, up to 1.5 tons and it surges really nicely through the gears getting to 62 in around 10 seconds on the way to a somewhat modest top speed of 115 miles an hour. Still this vehicle does have quite a bit of frontal area to present to the air stream. Uh, we should additionally mention that Turbo D 130 horsepower combo buyers also get the alternative of the brand's smooth quick shift 8 speed automatic gearbox and that's an option that might be a good one for owner driver urban operators who want well just one less thing to worry about as they dodge between trucks and traffic lights. To suit the current zeitgeist, Vauxhall is also offering petrol power once again to combo van buyers and much more credibly than it's done in the past thanks to the installation of the PSA Group's excellent three-cylinder 1.2-litre turbo unit. Uh, most buyers needing to fuel this LCV from the green pump will opt for this power plant in a 110 horsepower form where it's mated to a six-speed manual gearbox and makes 62 miles an hour from rest in around 12 seconds on the way to a maximum of nearly 110 miles an hour. Pulling power is strong even from low revs and there's plenty of punch in the mid-range, although there's little point in revving it out. Uh, the other petrol alternative is a 130 horsepower version of that engine, but if you go for that then you have to go for the auto gearbox. Other things to note, uh, well, Vauxhall's never been especially good at making sweet shifting manual gearboxes, and it still isn't. Uh, the stick doesn't like to be hurried through the gate, and it has a rather long throw between ratios. More importantly though, uh, long days at the wheel of this van can be made much easier and safer than they were before, and not only because of the large door mirrors or the more sophisticated electric power steering that you get this time around. Uh, now that does facilitate though a relatively tight 10.8 meter turning circle. This time around the designers have prioritized the inclusion of a whole raft of optional camera driven safety kit that not so long ago would have been totally foreign to vans in this segment. Uh, autonomous braking, lane departure warning, uh, forward collision alert, speed limit recognition, auto dipping headlights, um, even a flank guard system that stops you from maneuvering the side of your combo into a solid object. It's all now there if you're prepared to pay for it. Something a bit more basic has been taken care of this time around too, refinement. Uh, the previous model's diesel units were amongst the noisiest in the segment, but the PSA engineering has much improved this showing and as before there's a standard full height bulkhead so that the sound you do get doesn't reverberate around the interior. Operators needing to deliver on slippery building sites or requiring continued mobility through the coldest winter snap may want to look at equipping their combo with Vauxhall's IntelliGrip pack, uh, and that's based around improving front wheel traction. It's very effective in the way that it works with the standard ESP stability program to break a wildly spinning front wheel and transfer torque to the tyre with most traction. Uh, now, control of this setup is via a rotary knob near the gear stick, which offers dedicated modes to deal with either snow, mud or sand, or indeed to turn all the electronics off completely, as you uh, very well might want to do uh, when, for example, you are braking on gravel or slush, when locked up wheels can actually build up a little buffer in front of them to help you stop. There's even an incorporated hill descent control system for easing you down steep slippery slopes, and you can further build on that with an optional construction pack, and that gives you increased ground clearance, um, extra underbody protection and more tractable Michelin mud and snow tyres. Uh, this is all enough to enable negotiation of some surprisingly sticky situations. 
Sticky situations for most typical combo buyers though are likely to be confined to awkward deliveries and difficult deadlines. Uh, this improved model's greater comfort, connectivity and manoeuvrability means that you'll be better equipped to deal with situations like those. Or to put it another way, while you're worrying it'll give you just one less thing to worry about. And that's a concept that we can all buy into. The fourth generation E-Series version of this combo has a very different look to its predecessors and a slightly different design approach too. This PSA Group engineered van is actually 49mm shorter in height than the previous generation Fiat platform model, but otherwise it's usefully larger than its predecessor in terms of all the other outward dimensions. And that includes the stat that really matters, that of wheelbase, which determines the uh, space efficiency inside. Now we'll get to that in our practicality and cost section. In this part of the film though, our focus is gonna be on the exterior body shape and the experience that you're gonna have up front in the cab. Now we'll start outside where this nose section has been crafted to deliver what Vauxhall hopes is a robust appearance. Uh, the brand's usual prominent Griffin badge on the grille is flanked by chromed wings, which flow into these angular headlamps that can be specified with a high beam assist system. Now, disappointingly, there's no high roof option this time around, but there is still a choice of either this standard 4.4 metre body length or a longer L2 4.75 metre version that sits on its own distinct lengthier wheelbase. That makes the extended variant 13 millimetres longer than the old L2 body shape in the previous generation range. Uh, at the rear, as usual with an LCV, the lighting design is vertical and linear to ma maximise the opening aperture of the doors. And these feature integrated hidden hinges uh, designed to provide greater security against theft. Further up, this van can be specified with a high set rear camera attachment. More on that in a minute. Um, under the skin, this model, like its Peugeot partner and Citroen Berlingo design stablemates, uses the latest version of the stiff, strong EMP2 platform that the PSA group uses for its mid-sized cars, models like Vauxhall's Grandland X SUV. Uh, this platform features only at the front of the vehicle though. The rear part of the chassis has been carried over from the previous generation Peugeot and Citroen LCVs uh, because the development team felt that the carriage capacity and payload benefits that that structure offered couldn't be improved on. To be frank, we'd slightly take issue with that. After all, the old Fiat Doblo platform third generation combo was 13 millimeters shorter than this one, yet it managed to offer fractionally more space inside. Uh, there is a way though that you can get virtually the same carriage capacity that the lengthiest long wheelbase version of that previous model could offer, yet still stick to this more affordable and maneuverable standard length L1 body shape. Tick the box for the optional uh, flex cargo package that we have here and your combo cargo will come with a really clever modular folding front passenger bench, a configuration which allows the outer passenger seat to be folded be flat folded. so that longer items can be poked through from the cargo area. Now with this feature in place and in use, uh, load capacity increases by half a cubic metre, hence the way that this standard length L1 body style can offer long wheelbase L2 standards of carriage space. Now another way of utilising the flex cargo layout is to raise the seat base vertically against the seat back so that tall items can be carried or perhaps fragile things that you don't necessarily want to consign to the loading bay. Now, the other benefit of the flex cargo package is that it includes uh, this useful middle seat so that the third passenger can be accommodated if necessary. And then we really don't understand why some journalists criticize this feature. Yes, the proximity of the uh, centrally dash-mounted gear lever does make it difficult for an adult to comfortably use this berth, but it's only there for short journeys and emergency situations anyway. In any case, it's not only adults who travel in vans. Real world combo cargo users uh, tend to find this central berth very useful for occasions when, well, for example, it's necessary to drop the kids off on the way to work. Other benefits offered by this middle seat arrangement are found in terms of cabin practicality. Uh, beneath it, there's a useful stowage compartment that can keep valuables away from prying eyes. Uh, if you flatten the backrest, 
then a handy desk surface is revealed and that includes a neat pivoting writing table that makes it much easier to use a laptop or to scribble on delivery notes. It's features like these that'll make this van an easier proposition if you're needing the kind of mobile office functionality that many owner drivers now seem to want. Right, let's take a seat at the wheel. Now, some brand engineered LCV models feature virtually no cabin differentiation whatsoever, but this isn't one of them. Uh, the gear lever, the stalks off the steering column, uh, the instrument dials and the infotainment graphics, they're all specific to this Vauxhall. And so is the steering wheel, which is grippier and more tactile than the one you'll find in the equivalent Citroen version of this design. And it's not tiny and set right down in your lap, as is the case with the equivalent Peugeot. Uh, perhaps uh, most importantly though, this is a much higher quality interior than was served up by the previous generation combo. Uh, it has more horizontally orientated architecture and there are smart materials on the dashboard. Uh, the seats are much improved too. Plus you can specify a bit of extra high tech this time around. Options include a head up display and what Vauxhall calls a permanent rear view camera. And that's a five inch monitor that sits where a rear view mirror would normally be. Uh, as well as functioning as a reversing camera, this can show you the passenger side of the vehicle and offer rear view monitoring. Basically permanent rear vision at speed, just like you get from an ordinary rear view mirror. Neat. We'll also talk about infotainment. Um, earlier we mentioned this design's potential for mobile office functionality. If you go for a top variant or pay a bit extra, you get this sophisticated center dash multimedia screen, which is eight inches in size and sits high and proud here on top of the fascia. Uh, there's the usual DAB audio, informational functions and optional navigation features, of course, but it can do a lot more than that. Uh, make full use of this display and you really will be able to take quite a lot of your your company's office functionality out on the road with you. Uh, standard Apple CarPlay and Android Auto uh, projection mirroring means you'll be able to access apps that you'd normally access from your smartphone. And there's also voice control, audio streaming, and of course, there's the usual Bluetooth linking functionality too. Now, what we're very glad this screen doesn't do is operate the ventilation controls. Uh, the climate and the ventilation buttons thankfully remain separate located down here further on the centre stack. On to cabin practicality. Now, if you were to add up the capacity of the 15 different storage compartments available within the cab of this combo cargo, you would arrive at a figure of 113 litres. Uh, perhaps the cleverest element is the design of this upper glove box. That's vastly increased in size by virtue of the fact that the front passenger airbag that would normally restrict this storage area size has been moved up into the ceiling. Now, this glove box can take an A4 clipboard or a laptop, and it incorporates uh, a USB port and an aux in socket. Uh, it is a pity though that it can't be called for the storage of things like cans of drink and chocolate. Uh, now unfortunately this slippery, shallow, uh, narrow mid-level tray below the glove box is uh, pretty much useless and we're also disappointed by the fact that the um, open storage area just below that is reduced in size by the need to accommodate a bulky fuse box. What else? Um, well, there are decently sized two-part door pockets, which incorporate holders that can take 1.5 litre bottles. Uh, if you avoid base trim, there's a stowage drawer beneath the driver's seat, which slides out. Uh, we like this practical overhead shelf. That's now a standard feature across the combo range. Uh, plus, there's a lidded storage box on top of the instrument binnacle and a useful cubby in front of the gear stick that can accommodate an optional wireless charging mat. Smaller items, well, they can be stashed behind the center dash infotainment screen and the lower frame of the screen incorporates a further USB port. And now if your combo features an electronic parking brake, you'll get a little coin holder just by it and a coin slot just above. And there are uh, ticket clips on the sun visors. Cup holders, well, those are mounted at either end of the top of the dash. And there's a curious little circular indentation near the gear stick, which is, well, presumably supposed to be a coin tray. It would be good if there was a jacket hook behind the driver's seat, but we do like the fact that a three pin 220 volt socket can, as here, be specified in the passenger footwell. 
As for other things you might want to know, uh, well, here's what we've found in our time with this van. It's easy to find a comfortable driving position that's aided by plenty of adjustment from the height adjustable seat and from the uh, multifunction three-spoke wheel. Both can be heated on request. We like the way that the central infotainment screen has been slightly angled towards the driver. That's unlike the one in, say, a uh, rival Ford Transit Connect. And as ever in a Vauxhall, all the controls are clearly marked and they all fall easily to hand, especially the gear leave, which sprouts neatly into your palm from the dash. Uh, the instrument dials that you view through this wheel, uh, they're clear and smart, and they come separated by an informational screen. Now that can display trip computer to functions, uh, a braking acceleration graphic and speed limit signs. Most combo cargo van models sit in the 17 to 21,000 pound bracket, excluding VAT and on the road charges. Uh, there's a choice of three Turbo D diesel power plants, with most buyers likely to choose the volume 75 and 100 HP units, which come mated to five speed manual transmission. Of the two, we'd always opt for the 100 horsepower engine because it gives this van a significantly higher payload capacity, and unlike the base variant, it includes a stop and start system. Uh, there's also a top 100 130 horsepower diesel derivative and that can be ordered with either a six-speed manual gearbox or with the option of the brand's quick shift eight-speed automatic transmission. Additionally, it is worth mentioning that this time around with the combo, uh, Vauxhall is also offering an alternative 1.2 litre petrol unit and that's available with either 110 horsepower and a manual gearbox or 130 horsepower and the quick shift auto. They are two gross vehicle weights on offer to combo cargo buyers. In this case, we've gone for the 2000 version, which designates that this LCV has a gross vehicle weight of two tonnes. But provided you've taken our advice and you've avoided the base 75 HP diesel engine, it might be wise to cover yourself by paying £350 more for the 2300 variant, which, as the numerology suggests, has a gross vehicle weight of 2.3 tonnes. Uh, the other advantage of going for a combo 2000 300 derivative is that you'll get a body shape choice with the option to trade up from the standard L1 body style that we have here and go for the 350 millimeter longer L2 version. Now that attracts an extra cost of 900 pounds XVAT if you want it. Neither of the two body lengths offer a high roof option, but the 100 HP diesel version of the longer L2 variant can be had in crew van form, which gives you a second seating row. Additionally, uh, we'll tell you that there is also a separate MPV car version of this design. That's the Combo Life, although, of course, that's not our focus today. Uh, across the Combo cargo range, there are three trim levels to choose from. Things kick off with addition trim, which is what you'll need if you want the base 75 HP diesel engine. From there, the lineup progresses to the mid range sportive spec, that's what we have here, and then for standard van versions only, onto the top limited edition nav variants. On to the value proposition that Vauxhall's pricing delivers us here. Uh, you'd expect this combo cargo model to be priced very similarly to its Peugeot partner and Citroen Berlingo van design stablemates, which is broadly the case. Uh, we would point out, though, that if you're comparing spec with spec, uh, so say a base level combo with a base level Berlingo or partner, or a mid level combo with a mid level Berlingo and partner, and so on, then you'll find that those alternative French models are generally better equipped. Uh, it's probably nothing that you couldn't negotiate away though as part of the deal that your Vauxhall dealer could offer you. Now, the PSA Group's policy has been to price all three of these EMP2 platform LCB contenders amongst the more expensive offerings in the segment for spacious B-segment compact vans. Rival models like the Volkswagen Caddy and the Mercedes Saitan would probably end up costing much the same if you equalised equipment levels. Uh, other segment competitors, though, uh, things like Renault's Kangoo, uh, Fiat's Doblo Cargo and Ford's Transit Connect could conceive save you 1,500 to 2,000 pounds in like-for-like -like form, but then you would probably expect that those are much older designs. 
It would certainly help Vauxhall's cause here if standard equipment levels were to be generous. So let's take a look at that now. Uh, we would point out that it's nice to see that even the most basic edition spec models get equipment features that you might have to pay extra for with entry-level variants of rival vans in this segment. Uh, stuff like a DAB radio with Bluetooth, uh, powered heated mirrors and an overhead storage shelf. Other standard edition spec features include one-touch electric front windows, uh, a multifunction trip computer, daytime running lights, a four-way adjustable driver's seat, USB and audio jacks, uh, remote central locking, and the no-cost option of a full-size spare wheel. Uh, you get a proper full-height bulkhead too, separating the cab from the load bay. And the near-side sliding side door that you get to access that area in this standard length model is built on in the lengthier L2 body shape by a second sliding door on the other side of the vehicle. Now the second core combo cargo trim level is Sportive, which is what we've got here. Now this specification will get you the kind of version of this Vauxhall that you're more likely to want if you're an owner driver operator. And that's courtesy of the inclusion of comfort orientated items like air conditioning, rear parking sensors and cruise control. Uh, there's also a six way driver's seat with adjustable lumbar support, center armrest and storage. And there's a remote control security alarm, which would advise you if anyone's tried to break into your combo in your absence from it. Uh, sportive variants also look more sophisticated and that's courtesy of larger 16 inch wheels, metallic paint and body coloured bumpers. Now at the top of the range sits LE nav trim which includes more of the luxury orientated items that really make combo ownership a bit more pleasant. Uh, now the key inclusion here is an 8 inch media nav pro center dash color infotainment touchscreen with 3D navigation and Apple CarPlay, Android Auto smartphone mirroring. Plus the aesthetics at this level are sharper still thanks to body color for the door handles and for the mirrors, uh, 16 inch alloy wheels, side protection moldings and a revised front bumper including a skid plate and fog lights. On to options. Now, there are several things we think you really ought to try to specify on this van, if funds permit, so we'll start with them. Uh, arguably the most important one is the Flex Cargo Pack that we've got fitted here. Now, this gives you a useful modular folding passenger bench seat that allows the cab to either take up to three people or to accommodate longer items pushed through a flat from the cargo bay. Uh, Another key option is the useful overload indicator and that's a digital display added to the cargo bay that tells you if you weighted the backup more than you should have done. If we were buying, we'd also want to talk to our dealer about a really clever optional feature, the permanent rear view camera. Now this works via a five inch screen mounted where the rear view mirror would normally be. Uh, the setup providing tri-function rear and near side visibility. Now it functions in three ways, as a rear view camera, as a digital rear view mirror, and as a viewpoint for the passenger side of the vehicle that would normally be blind to you when you are turning out of spaces and junctions. Talking of screens, if you're buying into the range at Edition or Sportive level, you'll probably want to consider the 8-inch Center Dash Multimedia Monitor that would really help you to use this combo as a mobile office. Uh, this display comes complete with voice activation, an RDS traffic program feature, and Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring, which will allow you to view things like apps on the fascia display. Uh, with the two volume trim levels, there's the alternative option of the even more sophisticated multimedia Navi Pro package that we've been trying here. Uh, that, as the name suggests, adds in navigation to the infotainment package. Now, if you have got yourself this central fascia screen, you'll also be able to tick the box for the optional parking pack. Now that will build a rear view camera into it. Uh, the parking pack also gives you all round parking sensors, um, power folding door mirrors, front fog lights, if the spec level that you've chosen doesn't already have those, and a flank guard system of sensors that uh, supports the driver while turning at low speeds and provides a warning where there's a risk that the vehicle side will collide with an obstacle. 
What else? Uh, well, for winter peace of mind, you might want to look at the IntelliGrip pack, which uses the stability control program to maximize front wheel traction in slippery conditions. And it offers a choice of five selectable driving modes to suit the terrain that you're traveling over. Uh, now, if your company regularly delivers on rough roads or into areas like building sites, then you might want to pair that system with the uh, optional construction pack. Now that will give you um, underbody protection, Grippier, Michelin Latitude, Mud and Snow tyres and 30 millimetres of extra ground clearance. As for options that fall more into the nice to have category, well, there's an optional wireless charging mat and a 220 volt accessory socket in the front footwell. If you avoid base trim, you can also add in a head up display. Uh, as for aesthetics, there are various extra cost metallic and pearlescent paint options and uh, sportive spec customers can specify 16 inch alloy wheels if required. On a base edition variant, you might want to add in air conditioning, an alarm and rear parking sensor as two. The top spec LE nav variant can be had with a keyless entry and start system. In a moment we'll brief you on the optional safety pack and if you go for that and you've avoided entry level trim you'll be able to specify the winter pack that we have here which gives you a heated steering wheel and heated seats. There is also an optional sight and light pack now that will give you high beam assist, uh, rain sensitive wipers and a 3.5 inch color instrument cluster display that includes a driver drowsiness indicator. Now if you tick the box for the sight and light pack then you'll also be able to specify electronic climate control if you want it to. As for practical stuff, well, we'd say you really need to consider adding in the vinyl plastic floor covering for the loading area. Um, alternatively, across the range, you can specify a plywood floor covering instead. Uh, you'd probably also ideally want the enhanced LED lighting for the cargo bay. A rear roof flap is available on the base edition spec models. That's ideal if you want to poke out long items like ladders. Uh, some buyers will want the optional bulkhead glazed window and glazed asymmetric rear doors are also available for the few that want those plus the side doors can also have glazed panels too if you wish uh, in addition do remember that on this standard shape body style uh, you have to pay extra if you want an extra offside sliding side loading door roof rails are optional too and of course you can add in a tow bar Enough with standard spec and options, let's move on to safety. Now a whole range of camera driven safety features are being offered for this fourth generation combo model. All of them are optional, but for the moment you would expect that in this cost conscious part of the LCV segment. Hopefully this approach might change in the future. If you're a combo buyer, we think it would be well worth looking at the camera driven tech. Uh, the key stuff is an optional safety pack which uses a front camera system to deliver a number of key features. Now arguably the most important one of those is the company's automatic emergency braking with pedestrian detection or active safety brake setup. Now this is one of those uh, autonomous braking systems that as you drive at urban speeds scans the road ahead in search of potential accident hazards. Now if one's detected you'll be warned. Now if you don't respond or well perhaps you aren't able to the brakes will automatically be applied to decrease the severity of any resulting accident. Now as part of this there is a forward collision alert system and that will warn the driver if he or she is getting too close to the vehicle in front. Uh, now if you don't respond and a collision seems imminent then the uh, automatic emergency braking functionality will automatically be activated. Uh, the safety pack also includes lane keep assist with lane departure warning. Now that works on the move uh, to sense if you're drifting out of your lane on the highway and it applies subtle steering to ease the car back to where it ought to be. Uh, you'll also get speed limit recognition which alerts you if you go over the legal limit and a driver drowsiness system which monitors your driving reactions for drowsiness and if necessary it'll warn you to stop for a restorative coffee.
As for other more conventional safety features, well, there's ESC stability control, the usual ABS braking system with EBD, electronic brake force distribution to make it more effective, and EBA, emergency brake assistance to help in panic stops that will be advertised to following motorists by automatically activating hazard warning lights. Uh, there's also hill start assist, which stops you from drifting backwards on uphill junctions. And if you can avoid entry level trim, you'll get tyre pressure monitoring too. Uh, specify the optional tow bar and you'll also get a trailer sway mitigation system. Uh, we're always disappointed on a commercial vehicle to find only a single driver's airbag fitted to standard, but then that's unfortunately the case with most vans. At least with this Mark IV combo, you have the option to go a lot further uh, with the extra cost availability of not only a front passenger airbag, but also of side and curtain bags. A tyre pressure deflation detection system is optional too. Time to focus on practicality, so as usual, let's start here at the business end. As expected, uh, the doors open to either 90 or 180 degrees. Initially, the opening is to 90 degrees. Then if you release this little yellow catch near the door hinge to 180 degrees. This second little yellow catch on the trailing edge of the left-hand door enables that larger door to be locked in the closed position while the opposing loading door is left open. That's the sort of configuration that you would want in the event of a long load needing to be accommodated which would protrude from the rear of the vehicle. Uh, now if the stuff that you have to carry is merely heavy rather than long uh, you'll be pleased to find that there is a relatively low loading lip which varies between 548 and 620 mils depending on version. Right, let's take a look inside uh, where you'll find a cargo area that's a fraction larger than the one you'll get in an equivalent Ford Transit Connect and a fraction smaller than the one you'll find in a Renault Kangoo. Uh, obviously, it's exactly the same as the one that you'll get in this model's two design stablemates, Peugeot's Partner and Citroen's Berlingo. Now, from side to side, this area is 1,550 mils wide and even in this standard length combine model, that's big enough to swallow a couple of Euro pallets. And that's thanks to um, a useful 1229 millimetres uh, between the wheel arches, payload permitting, of course. Now on that subject, the payload capacity you can expect will depend a great deal on the GVW or gross vehicle weight that you've specified with this Vauxhall. Now there are two GVWs on offer to uh, combo cargo buyers. In this case, we've gone for the 2000 version, which designates that this LCV has a gross vehicle weight of two tonnes, but it can only take payloads of between 658 and 668 kilos, depending on variant. Now, provided you've avoided the base 75 horsepower diesel engine, it might be wise to cover yourself by paying £350 more for one of the 2300 versions, which, as the numerology suggests, have a gross vehicle weight of 2.3 tonnes and can take between 955 and 1021 kilos, depending on derivative. Now, apart from the price premium, the only real downside in going for a 2300 GVW combo is that your towing capacity will fall quite a lot. In in a 100 horsepower diesel variant like this one, uh, the brake tone capacity will fall from 1200 to 850 kilos with the higher GVW, while for the 130 horsepower diesel, it'll fall from 1500 to 1200 kilos. Now, talking of payload brings us to a fresh optional feature added into this E-Series design that we really like, the overload indicator. Now, this is there to inform a combo cargo operator when the vehicle's maximum authorised payload has been exceeded, um, avoiding safety issues or the risk of overloading fines. Now, the measurement of the load weight is triggered uh, either automatically, and that's when the engine started, or manually when the vehicle's parked uh, by pushing the provided button in the load area. As with most vans of this size, there's no way of loading in something as large as a Euro pallet through the side door, but it slides to reveal a decently sized aperture uh, that's up to 675 mils wide and up to 1270 mils high. Get inside and with this standard length body style, you get a load space length of 1817 mils plus between 1236 mils of interior height that rises to 1243 mils in the L2 model. Unfortunately, this time around for combo buyers, there's no high 
high roof option that would enable you to increase that. Vauxhall hopes that if you want that, you'll trade up to a short wheelbase high roof version of their larger mid-sized Vivaro van instead. Anyway, the result of all these stats is that as a starting point, a standard length combo cargo like this one can swallow 3.3 cubic meters. Uh, thanks to an extra 350 millimeters of body length, creating a load space length of 2,167 mils, the L2 version can increase that figure to 3.9 cubic meters. Now, both figures are actually a fraction less than the previous generation version of this design could manage, and that's thanks to a 69 mil reduction in height this time around. Mind you, you might be glad of that when you're inching under height restrictors. In segment terms, uh, we're talking of capacities fractionally more than a rival Ford Transit Connect and slightly less than a competing Renault Kangoo. Now, we mentioned those combo cargo capacity figures as a starting point because if you've ticked the box for the optional flex cargo pack that we've been trying here, then your chosen version of this Vauxhall would come with a clever modular seating system, uh, which will enable you to flatten this outer passenger seat into the floor and uh, push through longer items into the cab and that'll increase your loading length to 3,090 mils in this standard length model and 3,440 mils in the L2 version. As a result, total carriage capacity can be upped to 3.8 cubic meters in this standard length model or as much as 4.4 cubic meters in the lengthened L2 body style. In other words, you might not necessarily need the L2 version if your requirement for the carriage of really lengthy things is only occasional. Now, another option for dealing with the carriage of longer items like ladders, and pipes is to specify the extra cost rear roof flap. Now here a flap at the back of the roof opens to an angle of 40 degrees giving an aperture 617 mils long and 1201 mils wide. For plumbers, carpet fitters and decorators that's definitely a box to tick. What else? Uh, well, a few years into ownership, it's unlikely that the cargo section of your combo cargo is going to look as pristine as this. So it'll make sense to take steps at the outset to protect both the floor and the sides of the vehicle interior from the inevitable scrapes and scratches that come with daily use. So we'd make sure that we specified the optional heavy duty vinyl floor covering that's been fitted here and that protects the base of the load compartment. Um, now, alternatively, uh, coat ply lining floor is also available and many operators will as usual want to consider a full ply lining kit to properly protect the sides of the cargo area. As with the previous combo model, this one features this full height bulkhead. Now this can be specified with glazing on request. Uh, as well as doing wonders for driver's cab refinement, this obviously uh, provides more protection should your load slide forward during, uh, say, an emergency stop. Not that that should happen if you've secured the load using the six floor mounted tie down points provided in the cargo bay. Uh, the optional enhanced LED lighting for this area would, we think, be well worth having for nighttime deliveries. On to running costs, and let's start with the volume 100 horsepower diesel power plant that most combo cargo buyers will choose. Obviously, exact figures vary a little with individual trim variants and body lengths, but in rough terms with this particular engine, you're looking at between 66 and 68 mpg on the combined cycle, and somewhere between 109 and 112 grams per kilometer of CO2. Don't assume that the lesser 75 HP diesel unit will be more frugal. From launch, that base engine lacked the engine stop start system that's standard elsewhere in the lineup. So it was fractionally dirtier and less economic as a result. Uh, for the top 130 horsepower Turbo D variant, you're looking at 64.2 mpg and 116 grams per kilometer of CO2 for a manual model, or 65.6 .6 mpg and 113 grams per kilometer for the quick shift automatic. For completion, let's also tell you that an entry-level petrol-powered 1.2-litre, 110-horsepower combo cargo manages around 50 mpg on the combined cycle and around 125 grams per kilometre of CO2. And that might give low-mileage users cause to pause for thought before automatically gravitating towards a diesel. Now, all the figures we've just quoted are based on readings calculated using the latest WLTP, World Harmonised Light Vehicle Test Procedure Cycle, but the stats have been converted back to the most recent new European driving cycle, NEDC 2-spec, since that's what a lot of rival models are still using. 
All of which might be a recipe for confusion if you're trying to compare the efficiency of this Vauxhall with its mid-sized van-based MPV class competitors. It might help then to give you the bottom line here. The only rivals that can match this combo cargo's efficiency showing are the two that directly share its engineering, Citroen's Berlingo and Peugeot's partner. If instead you were to choose a contender in this class like a Ford Transit Connect, a Volkswagen Caddy or a Fiat Doblo, you'd struggle to get near the fuel or CO2 readings of this Vauxhall. A lot of this is down to weight. Uh, let's just take one example. This mid-range diesel combo cargo model weighs 180 kilos less than an equivalent diesel Ford Transit Connect. Now you'd expect that to make quite a difference and it does. Now earlier we mentioned the engine start-stop system. Uh, the trip computer screen in the instrument binnacle will tell you how long that's been functional for on any given trip. Although, come to think of it, we're not absolutely sure why you'd ever want to know that. Uh, as usual with modern vans, there's a gear efficiency indicator to tell the driver which is the best cog to be in to use this fuel. Keep an eye on that and drive with frugality as a priority and you should be able to eke an impressive range from the fuel tank. Now that, uh, for some reason, is much larger in the petrol variants than it is in the diesels, 61 litres as opposed to 50 litres. Uh, this diesel unit features all the latest efficiency and anti-pollutant technology, so there's an oxidation catalytic converter, an NOx absorber, an SCR or selective catalytic reduction catalytic converter and of course a diesel particulate filter. Plus, like all other modern diesels, this one uses AdBlue injection. You'll need to get the 17 litre tank that holds that mixture uh, topped up every 12,500 miles. Uh, you'll want to get that done as part of regular servicing. Uh, maintenance costs are likely to be low and that's a welcome byproduct of this fourth generation design's shared PSA group ancestry, especially if you choose the 1.5 litre diesel engine, which only requires servicing uh, every 25,000 miles or every two years, whichever comes first. Service intervals for the petrol engines come around every year or 12,500 miles, again, depending on which comes sooner. Uh, we'd recommend buyers look at the optional Vauxhall care package. Now that gives you three years of servicing, an extra two years of roadside assistance and your first MOT for £19 a month on the petrol models and £22 a month on the diesels. When it comes to maintenance, there's the peace of mind of knowing that your combo will be looked after by Vauxhall's specialist premier van centre dealer network. Now this offers transparent pricing while you wait repairs, if the parts are in stock, and appointment-free servicing for diagnosis work. Uh, the premier centres also give you courtesy vehicles or local drop-offs, a free vehicle health check with every workshop visit, and a free wash and vacuum after every service. Uh, now earlier we mentioned the need to top up the AdBlue additive on diesel engines, well that's an included part of the Premier dealer service. What else might you need to know? The residual values. Well, after three years and or 60,000 miles, independent experts cap reckon a typical 100 HP diesel powered combo cargo will be worth 29% of what you originally paid for it, which is reasonably class competitive. As for insurance, well, let's give you a guide to the ratings for the Turbo D derivatives. Uh, you're looking at groupings between 28A and 30A for the 75 HP variant and 29E to 30E for this 100 HP version. The 130 HP models are rated at group 30E to 33A. You'll also need to know that Vauxhall includes a three-year, 60,000 mile warranty. That's an unremarkable package, but it can be extended up to five years and 100,000 miles at extra cost. A year's free breakdown cover comes as standard, along with a six-year anti-corrosion guarantee. Vauxhall builds more vans in Britain than anyone else and its objective is to sell more vans in Britain than anyone else. This, the most sophisticated compact LCV the brand's ever offered, should help the Griffin maker towards reaching that goal. Now true, the company has had to borrow French engineering to create it, but that won't matter one jot to the many British businesses who rely on Vauxhall for van value. Now that last attribute has been a constant combo virtue, whether this model line has been based on General Motors, Fiat, or as here, on PSA Group underpinnings. 
This time around, the combo has become cleverer and more sophisticated while still retaining the practicality that's made it an LCV favourite. The looks and the cabin are much more modern, as is the infotainment and the safety provision. And we like the clever new tech, particularly the overload indicator and the permanent rear view camera system. And the design here backs up the high tech stuff with slick features that are intended to make the working day just that little bit more straightforward. The flex cargo modular seating system, for example, that's a must have feature on this LCV. As usual with a combo you get very class competitive payload and carriage capacity figures which are further aided this time around by the extended length of the longer L2 version. Plus the fresh EMP2 platform has helped to provide excellent ride quality. And there is an unbeaten set of running costs if you go for the diesel engine. It all adds up to a strong business proposition. Issues are few. Uh, pricing, that's a bit higher than we'd ideally like to have seen. Uh, some competitors offer the useful option of the high roof body style that you can't have here. And the manual gear shift, that can be a bit notchy. Um, that's about it though. Of course, you could also argue that pretty much everything that's on offer here is also available from this model's Peugeot partner and Citroen Berlingo design stablemates. And you'd be absolutely right. But the combo is backed up by an arguably wider reaching UK dealer network and that's a big draw. And in summary, well you might see this model making too many headlines but the reality is that it's one of the most complete vehicles the brand makes. Quietly concentrating on the things that really matter to operators, uh, to many it'll be invisible, just one of those fixtures of the urban environment that blend into the background but then sometimes the very best designs have the very lowest impact. What's important is that this combo cargo does more than enough to be spotted by the people who count. People who'll find this Vauxhall very difficult to ignore in their search for a compact van. Job done.